desert wilderness to the bustling city, from the dryness of drought to the depths of the flood, from complete silence to overwhelming noise, each and every place is God's. In each and every place we seek, in each and every place we worship. Beloveds, welcome to service here at Emmanuel United Church of Christ. Whether you are joining us live and in the room or online at another time, we hope and believe that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you belong here. <sighs> Beloveds, will you stand as you are able then, in body or in heart, for our call to worship? We have come to affirm our historic faith, God of our mothers and fathers. We have come to remember God's benefits to us, the living. We have come to affirm our trust in the God of all futures, to whose name be blessed and honor, glory and power, never and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Providing God, you are over generous in all you supply for us in life. This the world needs to sustain all life, to provide sustenance, nourishment, and opportunities for all people. Let us live as those who acknowledge that without you, we are nothing. And help us to come to a sense that the potential of creation to sustain the whole of creation means we must play our part in making provisions of your love available to all. Amen. Amen, friends. Let us sing together for all the saints. As our scripture reader comes up, I invite our young people, our children, if you would like to go to Sunday school, you can go now. If you would like to stay through communion, you can wait. 
that this is your moment right now. Otherwise, we'll dismiss again in a minute. Little few minutes, several minutes. Words. The scripture this morning is from Kings uh, 17 through 24. Now Elijah the Tishbite of Tishbe in Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord the God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall, there shall be neither dew nor rain these years except for my word. The word of the Lord came to him saying, Go from here and turn eastward and hide yourself by the Wadi Kirith, which is east of the Jordan. You shall drink from the wadi, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. He went and lived by the wadi, Kirith, which is east of the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the wadi. But after a while the wadi dried up because there was no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Go now to Zarephath, which belongs to Sadeth, and live there, for I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he set out and went to Zarephath. There, when he came to the, date, the gate of the town, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel, so that I may drink. As she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. But she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I am now gathering a couple of sticks so that I may go home and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat and die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said, but first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me, and afterwards make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of meal will not be emptied and the jug of oil will not fail until the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth. She went and did as Elijah said, so that as she well so that she as well as he and her household ate for many days. The jar of meal was not emptied, neither did the jug of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, as he spoke by Elijah. After the son of the woman, the mistress of the house became ill. His illness was so severe that there was no breath left in him. She then said to Elijah, what have you against me, O man of God? You have come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to cause the death of my son. But he said to her, Give me your son. He took him from her bosom and carried him up to the upper chamber where he was lodging and laid him on his own bed. He cried out to the Lord, O Lord my God, have you brought calamity even upon the widow with whom I am staying by killing her son? Then he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried out to the Lord, O Lord my God, let this child's life come into him again. The Lord listened to the voice of Elijah. The life of the child came into him again, and he revived. Elijah took the child, brought him down from the upper chamber into the house, and gave him to his mother. Then Elijah said, See, your son is alive. So the woman said to Elijah, Now I know that you are a man of God, and that the word of the Lord is in your mouth is truth.
as we prepare to come to the table together, we remember that Jesus said that we should not come if we have harmed our brother, our sister, our sibling. And so we know that in the last week, there are places we have done wrong. We have failed to live into the love that we tried to live into, hope to live into. And so let us come together in a moment of honesty before God and one another in our prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess that from the beginning of time, we have failed to understand your call to us. We have acted as though we are gods in our own lives. We have acted or failed to act in ways that have led to injustice and oppression. We have turned away from you and sought after other gods, possessions, people, media, and other distractions. Forgive us for all the ways in which we have failed you and our neighbors. Call us back into abundant living of loving service that you offer us in your holy name. Beloveds of God, hear these words of hope. God who created you in God's image has redeemed you in Christ Jesus and for his sake forgives you all the ways you have sinned and fallen short. Receive this forgiveness with joy in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And as people reconcile to God and to one another, let us share signs of peace with one another. Peace be with you. It is a little different of a day. Our time in the Word together will be in part a discussion that is led with our stewards, but we are coming to this table together, um, uniting and caring for one another. And so the first thing we are doing to this morning as we come to the table is lifting and holding each other in prayer. Our community prayers are prayers that we care and carry and have just because we like each other and love each other are for, and I say that, for myself and Kelly and the Riveras. Yay! Anyway, um, Craig and Michael are celebrating their anniversary this week. Happy wedding anniversary. Uh, we are celebrating 24 years of membership for Christy and John Louis uh, and 31 years for Connie and 37 years for Kareen. So thank you all for your ministry in and among this community. We are holding in prayer all of those um, who are living victims of the hurricane and the flooding aftermath and all of those workers who are trying to care and regroup and rebuild. Um, we're holding in prayer Kathy, Jeannie, Blue, Michael, uh, Steve's brother John and nephew Sam, friends Carl and Larry, Crane's brother-in-law Dan, Jenny's cousin Jan, Fran and her sister Frida, Francine's friend Karen, Charlotte's brother Fred, Julia's friend Crystal, Sandy's sister Gail, and for all of those who are part of this community but can't be here on this morning, including but not limited to Betsy and Bill, Nancy and Vera. Are there others we are holding in prayer this morning? Yeah. For Charlotte's brother, nope. Charlotte's friend Mary's brother, Bill, and Mary's family. Um, as he is in hospice, and they're in the final days. I write notes. Hopefully I remember what they mean later. Are there others we are holding in prayer? We're going to go this way. Okay. Uh, Dick Hawkins is still, is he still in rehab? I assume if he's struggling to walk. Dick Hawkins is still in care and needing healing. Uh, 
Mm. Absolutely. What was the name again? Rolf. For Rolf and his family, for all of those who uh, journeyed with him in life and all those who will carry with him, carry him with them for always as they grieve. Um, Be at 50th anniversary of sorts. Since that's how you, that's kind of how you described it. Got involved. Uh, no, happy anniversary. <laughs> Many blessings on the years so far and the years to come. Green's friend Kathy, who had a double mastectomy. And is going through chemo, prayers for her journey, for the doctors, for healing. Hi, Kathy. I want to thank everybody for your prayers. It really helped. I'm so uncomfortable. Keep praying for Kathy. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And gratitude and bless for prayers too. Our time at the communion table unites us believers across time and space with all that God has made. And so we hold in prayer all of those who are living in the midst of environmental destructions, um, droughts and floods and hurricanes and fires and 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 um, and all of those who are living in the midst of and under the threat of violence whether it is in homes or through state sanctioned or institutional violence so we hold and carry all of those with us as we come together Beloveds, we come to this table not because it itself is so special, but because it is an echo of another table, a table that stretches as far as the eye can see, a table that is laden with good gifts, a table where no one goes hungry or sits alone, a table where everyone is ever loved and whoever loved us sits and feasts together. In our own lives, we sit at tables where there are empty chairs, people we love and miss, people who no longer stop by for dinner or come in for the holidays. We grieve the empty chairs. But we know that in Christ, our separation is only a temporary thing. We're going to take our time read some names as each name is read as you remember the person if they're your person i i need a lighter i don't have any lit candles up here i think there's one up there or matches matches will work too um sorry i invite you to come forward and light a candle this is the least ceremonial thing we've ever done oh my goodness and light a candle off of these ones that have been lit for the last half hour. That's fine, right? If the person is important to you, handle, if there is someone you want to remember whose name is not lifted up, or we have not listed, whether they um, have died in the last year or You may come up, say their name, and light a candle. Let us remember them with you. And so, let us hold in name, in heart, in our prayers together, those whom we love, 
John and Lynn Milos. Do you want to light a candle? Right here. Okay. Here's our candle section. There's candles on the table. So sorry. And then place them any in any bowl. Perfect. Daryl St Stachowski. Daryl. Daryl. Oh, okay. Don Desh. Okay. Will someone light a candle for Mary Ellen? Ken. Ken Wise. Jesse Kendall. For Gary Phelps. You want to light one for Ralph, too? Bill Cathy. And for Ellen Perkett. For Mr. Stevens. For John Patrick Fallon and for Dixie Dixon. And that ends my list. Who are you holding this day? For all of those we have mentioned in your presence, God, we give thanks. And come gladly to this table to eat once more with those we love, to join with all the saints, 
all our saints, and the pra praising Jesus Christ, who defeated death and leads us all to God's heavenly banquet. Beloveds, all are welcome. Will you pray with me? The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to give thanks to you, God, creator of all we know that is seen and unseen. You formed the world's every star and tree and ocean, the work of your hands in us. But more than dust and clay, you breathed your breath into us, made us in your image, walked with us in the garden. And even when the even when death crept in, you refused to abandon, abandon us. Still, death haunted your people in Egypt, where they faced slavery, in the promised land where they chose war, in Babylon, where they were forced to live in exile. Even in good times, not all flourished. Hunger and poverty, arrogance and greed, all threatened the life of your people. So you sent prophets to remind them to be good to each other. And that death and war and exile never have the last word. That you would always return to redeem and rescue. That there will be where? Not even down to the depths of Sheol, where you were not present with them. In time, you sent your son to walk among us, fully God, fully human, who ate and laughed and made friends, who taught and healed and forgave sinners, who called out hypocrites and risked safety for the sake of your kingdom, who wept with his friend when his friend Lazarus died. Death haunted Jesus too. He always knew it would be part of his story, but in a single breath he moved from fearing death to trusting you. Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will but yours be done. And so Jesus was crucified and his friends began to grieve, but grief only lasted three days because where death was part of Jesus' story, it was not the end. Jesus broke death's power because he showed us once and for all that's love. death need no longer haunt us. It is a shadow fleeting before the burning light of God. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with choirs of angels and with that great multitude no one can count from every nation from all tribes and people and languages, all the ordinary saints who have finished their race and sing forever to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Spirit, move in us that we might know we too are counted among the saints, God's beloved children, vessels of God's grace. We pray that we might be thankful and transformed so our lives may proclaim the once crucified and risen. Great mystery. Great is the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. On the night before Jesus died, when he knew he would not be with his disciples much longer, he gave them the sign to remember him by. First, he took the bread from the table. After thanking you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, That's, Oh, wait, I forgot to change my slide. I'm so sorry. Nope, other way. There it is. Take, eat, body, do this in remembrance of me. 
The same way Jesus took the cup, saying, Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of your bread and wine, that they may be your bread and the cup may be shared together. May it remind us that in ordinary things your love is found. And in ordinary days we can find your presence. Keep us breaking bread together in joy and in faith. Until you return to this world of amazement and the people you cherish. Until that day, we lift our prayers to you, trust using the words recited by all generations, praying to you, God, who is our mother and our father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Beloved, all has been prepared. Um, come forward as you please, as is fitting. I know it's a little awkward, so we can move to you towards your. We can move towards you. Um, will you come up? Okay, a little squirt.
Will you join me in prayer? Jesus Christ, Lamb and Shepherd, we remember you here as we remember all your saints. Help us to remember you, not just in this sanctuary, but in our homes and schools, our cars and offices, to remember that every part of our life is shot through with your grace, and that we are never alone, but surrounded by a cloud of witnesses, united by your love. Amen. Amen. Um, let us sing. Because if you look at the top there from 1 Corinthians, now there are a variety of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are a variety of services, but the same Lord. Now last week, the Board of Stewards shared with you organizations that we give financially and to support and why we do this. If you remember, we held up a sign similar to this. And I had said, I give to our singing bowl collection for Family Promise because no child, no family should be without a home. Is there a cause that brings you hope for a better future? Or is there an organization that did something for you recently or a long time ago, and you're grateful for that and you want to support it? Or perhaps you found that your values are shared by others and that moves you to help them either financially or to give of your talents. Now we would like to hear from you. At your table, you're gonna find papers that say, who do you do donate to and why? We thought we would have a facilitator at each table, but uh, we have four board members here, so we're gonna have to share. We have put a paper on your table that has some suggestions, if it want, just to prompt you to, to find in your heart what it is that you give to. And at, I'm sorry, at the end of our gathering time, uh, each uh, board member will share what we have at our table. So thank you for participating.
I'll start with my table. Um, okay, there we go. All right. Um, we all we have a lot of varieties. We have education. Sorry. Oh, okay. Um, education. Um, we had. Um, <laughs> find these out. Southern Poverty Law Center because it, they help us learn what we need to know. Um, a, a great number of our our giving is to uh, clothing places, food pantries, um, Meals on Wheels, and these are all charities that we cover here at Emmanuel. So I think that is our basis, is what we serve here for the people in our community. Well, at our table, um, the American Players Theater um, is open and accepting to all, and they feel it's very important to keep supporting. Is this on? Can you hear me? Okay. Um, some donate blood to help keep others going and save many lives with their, with their own personal blood. It's a special gift. Um, donate to breast cancer. Many of us have been touched by breast cancer, and so it's a great organization to give to. Thyroid Cancer Association, someone has been touched by thyroid cancer, and giving to that. St. Jude, the Milwaukee Rescue Mission, Boys Town, um, political causes, um, Southern Poverty Law was mentioned, the Navy Marine Corps Relief Society, is being supported, it's very important. Alzheimer's, the free clinic here in Oconomowoc, in Humane Society, where are some of them that people are giving to and supporting. Okay. Oh, go that way, go that way. All right, um, a number of uh, people at our table um, give to Emmanuel because of the openness of the congregation to who we were. Uh, you know, we um, listed, you know, giving to the church because of the help that they provide uh, community. Um, uh, World Vision uh, was discussed. A number of members give to that because of the support that they, they give to women. Uh, in the world. Um, uh, greater Good Charities and uh, the Hawaii Humane Society. Also, uh, animals in Ukraine uh, that are in need of care. Uh, the American Cancer Society, uh, because of their continued involvement in looking for a cure and, um, and that they give to families for loved ones um, who have uh, been uh, struck by or had to deal with uh, cancer. Um, and giving to Emmanuel UCC um, because of the love uh, that Emmanuel has given to uh, for 45 years, <laughs> and um, also my uh, giving to Emmanuel because uh, of of uh, their openness uh, for me, uh, and in the Milwaukee Symphony. <laughs> huh? Uvalde Library. Oh, yeah. All right, our table um, had many reasons for giving. A lot of them centered around beliefs. Other charities that had the same beliefs. Also needs, hunger, development of youth, helping those that are poorer than them, developing character, developing education. 
all those um, were the reasons why our group gave. And some of the places that have been mentioned before, the Free Clinic, UFW, Veterans, DAV, Paralyzed and Disabled Vets, especially those, I mean, vets that have given their lives to keep our freedom. That was important to our group. Uh, food pantry, scouting, Indian schools, St. Jude's. So those are many of the same ones that you have mentioned, um, but all for the same reason, because they share your belief or because they have helped you in some way. Our table has... Um, some of our some of our thoughts and and answers were um, giving to um, groups like Family Promise, Life Striders, Cancer, Alzheimer's Association, Suicide Prevention, Angels Grace, um, because we want people to have a chance to have a better life and to feel accepted. Um, giving to PFLAG, Trevor Project, LGBT Center, um, because we encourage exception, acceptance and allyship for the LGBTQIA, I don't know the rest of that community, sorry. <laughs> giving to Emmanuel, because we want this church to be available for comfort, support for anyone who may need it and comes for help and love and giving to Emmanuel because it values trans lives and believes that they are all God's beloved children. That leaves my table. This table gives um, Family Promise, Mary's Room, and Oconomowoc Public Schools. There's lots of how do we care for our young people and the people who care for our young people, mothers, parents, um, and supporting families and the all our welcomeness of Emmanuel. We, um, our story reading, our reading from way back at the beginning of service today was the story um, of a desperate woman making decisions for the end of her and her child's life. There was need and desperation and and man, I switched mics. I thought it wouldn't cut out this time. And God, Elijah, asked this woman to give more. And it turns out there was more than enough to care for Elijah in that time. Generosity multiplied generosity. And if we live in a mentality of abundance instead of scarcity, where we believe there is more than enough instead of never enough, maybe there will be. Because look again at the because it is. The reasons why you give to a different organization. Those are the reasons why we care on our investment. And if we live in abundance, we might see huge even in all corners of the world. So as part of our time of stewardship here at Emmanuel, think about those those wise, you do or might be part of the ministry at Emmanuel with your time, your talent, your gifts, your financial resources. Think about the abundance and the why of who we are today and who we are becoming and how you can be part of that. Um, and that will uh, be part of our giving and our stewardship. Next week, we're collecting our pledge cards and then having a lunch uh, uh, potluck. Do you have to pledge to be part of the potluck? No. Do you have to bring something part of the potluck? No. Do you, if you have a favorite recipe you want to share, bring it. Anyway, um, all are welcome, but that is what we are doing next week, which leads us into, oh no, I turned it off. Hey! Welcome to our time of offering and announcements. Our offering plate is in the back or on our PayPal here online. Um, our singing bowl is supporting Lake Country Care, caring um, 
Why didn't that end up in my notes? Uh, in Heartland organization provides clothes, hygiene products, furniture, appliances for those in need free of charge in Waukesha, um, Dodge, and Jefferson counties. I didn't see it on the announcements, but if anyone wants to come back at five tonight, we're going to play games. We had a good time last time. Um, Tuesday is Bible study and the election. Have you voted? Have you voted? Don't forget to vote. Uh, Monday night, our first safe and open conversations, like a conversation cafe, um, here at 5.30, um, Mahjong on Wednesday, PFLAG meets um, Wednesday night, but at 6 o'clock, it is our last gathering of prayer after the, our pre-election prayer has our last post-election gathering to pray for, I don't know, are we still waiting on results, or are we praying for unity in the midst and goodness in the midst of whatever had happened the day before? Um, and Thursday evening, um, the peer-to-peer -peer for folks with uh, disability or chronic illness uh, here at Emmanuel. And so put that on your calendar and share that with a friend. Of course, like I said, potluck. Uh, next Sunday after all of that in the evening, an opportunity for those who have felt hurt by churches, um, whether you're in this room or you want to invite somebody or let folks know, it is a, a step, a tw step towards healing. And so we will have a service at 5 o'clock uh, towards that. We'll have another one in the future. So if you can't make it, come to the next one. As always, uh, there are lots of ways to sign up and be part of the community and the things that are happening. Please take a look at your bulletin. Are there other announcements we need right now? Yes. Oh, we're going to do script. We're going to do um, script, the buying of the gift cards the first Sunday in December in preparation for in case people in your life get gift cards for Christmas. Yes. We're moving the tables back. If you're able to hang out and help us move tables back, that would be awesome. We're rolling them down to the fellowship hall. I know. Don't forget the cookies. All right, friends, will you join me in prayer? Sustaining God, you give us all we need, not just to survive, but to flourish. In gratitude, we bring these our gifts before you and accept them for the sake of Jesus Christ and bless them for the work of justice and love in the world. Amen. Let us stand as you are able and sing our closing song.
this blessing, we have so much to be thankful for. Let that be our focus this week. Leaving here, may we seek ways to be the answer to a prayer. And as we do, may God be the guide, Jesus be the carer, and God's spirit the inspiration for all we do and say. Go in peace. Amen.